Right, good day grade 12 learners and welcome to our next video in the CAT for 2025. And now that we've looked at what we needed to do for phase one, and remember we checked out that marker location, we went through and let me just get there as to what we needed to do for phase one. Uh, we went through all of that. I think we did the, the hand in as well, looking at that document those specs over there so we went through all of that and now we're going to look in this video at what is needed for phase two so they mention here firstly that we need to collect data and information that will help us answer the research questions that you may not find in the doc in other documented sources okay they tell us that you are going to need to create an electronic questionnaire so i'm sure you could use something like a google form to do that Remember that your survey needs to gather data that will help to answer the research questions. And we've gone through those research questions already. The questions, okay, they just say the same thing. Think of options available to you in terms of how you're going to administer the questions to at least, this is important, 25 respondents. So if you, you know, whether you're going to use the Google form or an electronic survey via Word, whatever the case is, you need to get the feedback, the response from 25 people, and that's a minimum. They want you to reach a cross-section of people in terms of different ages, different genders, etc., all these types of things. So, they mention you're creating a questionnaire in Word or any other, and either email them um, or placing a link online to get different people to answer. So, again, what we've been talking about. The questionnaire, let's just look at this must be created in a word processor printing and distributing copies of the questionnaire or creating an online version of the questionnaire using a word processor or by using an online tool such as an editable pdf document google forms etc so folks what you can do to you know just save yourself some hassle is just make sure that you Type out a document that's got all the questions that you'll have in the Google form and then go and create that Google form. And the reason why I would say go and create the Google form is simply because when you are done, you can take all those responses and export that to Excel, modify that, you know, format it, and that becomes your Excel spreadsheet. But they give you a number of options. So I think first things first, you need to understand we are creating a questionnaire. You're going to create that in Word, so there'll be a Word document with that. You then turn it into a Google form. It has to have, uh, it has to go out to at least 25 people. And have a look at this. You must have at least five questions. That's excluding things like name, gender, age, area. So these things are important, but you need to have five questions other than that. So these might be the first three or four questions, and then you continue with your other five. They say that the questions need to be relevant. Um, try to create questions where people can choose an answer from a list. So, folks, if we're wanting to extract data, we need closed questions. So, yes or no, or select from the following, or choose one of the above, you know, things like that. Only include biographical data if, uh, in your process, and if it's relevant to the information, then they talk here about designing the layout, and they say uh, it must suit the way it's going to be administered, should be easy to interpret, should be grouped together under relevant headings, which you can do in your Google form, like you can do all those things there. You need to use professional formatting and layout. And they just mentioned that it's a good idea to test your survey to see, you know, whether it's easy. So send it to someone. See if there's any issues with it. Make the necessary changes before you send it out to the 25 people. All right. Um, they also mention your hard copy questionnaires, if you're doing that, need to be stored safely, so that's fine. Then, using the data from the questionnaire together with data from other sources. Okay, so remember you had those other questions as well. So they want you to identify data suitable for spreadsheet processing, data suitable for database processing, and identify the data from external sources that can be used in a spreadsheet or database. And then they give you um, an example here as well. So, yeah, they say, 
we design some questions for your questionnaire to help you to answer this research question. For example, do you think ethical consideration is important for the use of AI tools? Your respondents may choose one of the following. Yes, sometimes, no, or I don't know. Now you can perform various calculations using the data from your questionnaire which gives you information from your respondents. In other words, how many people said yes? How many people said no? How many people have no clue? Right? And you can do various things with, with all of this. I just want to roughly go through everything here. Um, here they give you another example. On a scale of 1 to 5, indicate the impact or, yeah, indicate the impact the use of AI tools has had on you. So these are the type of things, or type of questions that you can um, include in your questionnaire. Then they say they want you to process and analyze the data in a spreadsheet. So here they say use data suitable for spreadsheet processing, including but not only data from the survey. So the spreadsheet that you're going to create, the data that you're putting in there doesn't only or must not actually only come from the survey, but from any other sources that you might have had. So you want to create a spreadsheet, import the data, ensure that it's relevant data, check the design, you know, all of that. Um, I know there are sometimes specifics. They mention here about consistent colors, borders, formatting. And then they say use filtering as, or sorting as needed on the data as well as formulas and or functions to process the data and answer any data-related questions posed in phase one, at least one from each level given on the next page. So this is important now, because when you start using functions in your Excel spreadsheet, and I just want to recap, we've got a Word document with our questionnaire. We then took that and we created a Google form with our questionnaire that we are sending out to the respondents. Then we are creating a spreadsheet based on those responses. And here we're going into some more detail because they say we need to use formulas. Now, there are four marks up for grabs. You can only get the four marks if you're going to be using multiple formulas. So for example, a level one formula is things like min, count, average. A level two formula is a sum if, large, small, left or right. A level three is power, mid, count if, sum ifs, round up, rand between, and a lookup or nested if function constitutes a level four um, function. Okay. Then they say here, yeah. I'm going to check the rubric now, but summarize the results that you will use in the report on a separate worksheet within the same spreadsheet. So, guys, they are very clear as to what they want. Okay, create appropriate meaningful graphs. I know usually they mention the number. And here we go. They want you to create at least two relevant graphs, although more might be useful, but that's going to depend on you, but a minimum of two. Okay, and then you're going to save that spreadsheet. Then they want you to do this, you know, something similar with databases. They want you to create a database, the meaningful file name, so it's entirely up to you. You need to create a table that contains at least five fields. Um, so that's one table, five fields. Okay. Use appropriate components. I'm just looking through. That's all fine. Okay, here we go. All text fields must have appropriate sizes. There must be one appropriate meaningful validation rule. There must be one appropriate meaningful list combo box and one appropriate meaningful input mask. So validation rule, combo box, and input mask. They want 20 records in the table. So even though you have five fields, you're going to have 20 records. They want three queries. And then they give you the complexity of the queries as well. They mention here, your queries need to show four different levels of complexity. And then you need to create one report. The report must be sorted according to at least one field, grouped according to at least one field, and have a meaningful calculation. Okay, and guys, you can go and check my other videos to see what I've done before. Then they want you to continue working on your report, the one that you had from phase one. You copied that into the phase two folder. You went to copy and paste. 
and now you continue working on that. So here we are with the handling for phase two. Submit a copy of the entire pet folder. This folder must have the original questionnaire you designed. That's in Word. A minimum of 25 completed, completely answered questionnaires from the Google form. The completed spreadsheet with the analysis of data and graphs. The completed database and your updated report with graphs added under findings under the findings section so the graphs that you created here you're going to copy them you're going to paste them in here um, put in your caption so that you can pull it through to your table of figures and then you've got your report okay sorry once you complete this report you're going to copy it from the phase two folder into the phase three folder and yes DBE learners, that is what is required from you for phase two of your pet. If there's any questions, please do pop it into the comments. And as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.